What is up guys, my name is Bailey and welcome back to another one of my videos. In this video, I have another product in front of you to show and review. This one's gonna be from the company TP-Link. This is a pass-through power line network extender. Now the reason why I picked this up is because I recently had to move my setup from where it was to a different room. And because I did that, I had to find a way where I can still stream play games and also upload content without having some Wi-Fi issues. Now what I used previously is a Mocha network adapter. So this is what I use from the company Action Tech. Essentially what this does is you plug in this adapter into the coax cable and you can run the internet through the coax cable all the way to another coax cable. So where I was was in my bedroom and I had another coax cable port that I could have used for a TV, but since I didn't have a TV in there, I used it to run this network and it worked completely fine. There was no issues when uploading videos, no issues when playing games, which is a main concern that I had because if you're playing games on Wi-Fi, you will have the packet loss and also spotty internet. So this Action Tech worked perfectly. So if you guys have the coax cable available to you, I'd recommend going with this one. But since I don't have a coax cable in the room that I'm currently in, I'm going to go ahead and test out this network extender through a power line. So this is pretty much the same thing, but instead of using it through a coax cable or a coax port, you'll be using the outlet on the wall. So this right here is the AV2000 model, but it says right here that you should be able to get up to 2000 megabytes per second per power line. Now I only have about 200 megabits on my internet, so I don't even need 2000 megabytes, but I ended up spending a little bit more just to make sure that I get the best product that I can possibly get for the price. Now it does state that you will be getting two ethernet ports. You guys can see on the bottom right here, there are two ethernet ports. So if you have two devices, you can connect two devices directly through the bottom ports right there. So right here it says it's ideal for 4K streaming and lag free gaming, which is perfect because I am using it for gaming. Um, it's a plug and play, so it should be pretty simple to set up. Showing you guys the specifications on the right side of the box. You guys can look at it yourself. It says it's 128 bit AES encryption. It also has a range up to 300 meters or a thousand feet over existing electrical wiring. I'm probably going to be about 50 to 100 feet away from the router to the room that I'm currently in. So this will work perfectly. So essentially how this works with this diagram is you plug in one of the devices into the outlet and then you plug in the router directly into this port right here. And then you would grab the other device, plug it in where you need the internet as far as the wired connection goes. So your TV that you need 4K streaming or a computer if you're planning on gaming a lot, then you plug it in near that. Then all you do is you plug in an ethernet cable into that device and then directly into the Wi-Fi extender. So it's pretty simple on how it works. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up to show you guys everything inside of the box and then go and do a little test as far as the speeds go with this device. So pulling it out of the box, that is everything inside of the box. You'll first get the quick installation guide. If you guys need to look over this, it is pretty simple. It is one big diagram and I've already explained it to you so setting that install guide to the side, you guys can see you do get the two devices. One of them goes near the router. The other one goes where you need the internet. So they are identical devices. You guys can see um, there's the plug to plug it in. Now what's great about this is that it doesn't take up one of your power ports. So once you plug this in, you still get this right here. It does say the max is 15 amps. You most likely won't have anything over 15 amps unless you're running like a space heater, which I would not recommend. Make sure you're using devices that are light in power usage so you don't destroy this device. So there is one button on the side here. It's a pair button right there. There should be some indicator lights on the right above the pair button. And then it does say that this one is rated up to 2000 megabytes per second with a TP-Link logo and then the two ports on the very bottom. So that's pretty much it for the devices. Setting those aside, the last thing in the box is gonna be two ethernet cables. And these, just to show you guys what they're rated, I'm gonna check the writing on here to show you guys if it's a Cat5 or a Cat6. So you guys can see right there, hopefully if the camera focuses, it's a CAT 5E, so it's rated up to 24 AWG, 
and it should be able to transfer enough data for your gaming needs. If you need better cables, you guys can obviously buy different cables, but they do include these ones, which is very nice if you don't have any on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and then show you guys the speed test on my computer. So I have the power line devices set up currently. I have not plugged it into my computer. I wanted to show you guys the speed with my computer connected to the Wi-Fi. Currently, I am connected to the five gigahertz channel. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a speed test on speedtest.net. So you guys can see that the download speed is 87.45, upload 23.72. Now this is very spotty because sometimes when I test it, it does get higher than that. So I'm gonna run it one more time just to give you guys an idea as to how spotty the Wi-Fi is where I'm currently at. So you can see now it's getting close to 150. Sometimes it can get up to 200 megabytes per second. I currently pay for about 250 megabytes per second. So um, like I said, it's very spotty on the Wi-Fi down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power line directly into my computer and show you guys what the speed test is with it connected to ethernet. So the download speed and the upload speed look like it's pretty steady. There's no big jumps or big dips. It looks like it's staying pretty steady around 70 for download and around 23 for upload. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a game to look at the packet loss with the power line and without the power line. So here I am in a game of Fortnite. You guys can see the ping on the top left right there. It's showing that I'm sitting around 40 to 50 there, which is pretty normal. And then the packet loss is showing 0%, which is exactly what I need. There was one bar right there, looks like 1% packet loss. Um, but normally it's a lot more than that. I'm going to go ahead and move around in the game to show you guys. But it is staying pretty steady at 0%. Maybe the occasional 1% packet loss, but that's much better than before when I was hitting about 12% packet loss with what I was doing. So this is with the power line. I'm gonna go ahead and actually unplug the power line and run it off of Wi-Fi to show you guys the difference on what the ping is and what the packet loss is. So here it is on the five gigahertz Wi-Fi channel. I'm gonna show you guys the ping and the internet there. So ping is sitting at about 44. So it's about the same as the power line. Packet loss is currently showing zero, but you can see the red lines coming in there more often than the power line goes. So right now it's getting up to 2% packet loss. And like I said, it's coming more often than the power line because when you're on Wi-Fi, it's not as steady as on ethernet. So I will have to test this out with the ethernet plugged in on a couple games. But from what I can tell is that the ethernet plugged in through the power line is already gonna make it much more steady than on Wi-Fi. So hopefully this video gave you guys an idea as to whether or not this power line is worth it. I'll be running some tests with it. If you guys want an update on it, let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully give you guys an idea on whether or not it's worth picking it up. But like always, I'll catch you guys all in the next video.